Yes. yes. I just, just finished, finished working, working on my, my last show. show. Sweet. I wonder, I wonder if Tailgate will want to make an a special appearance on my show. Let me call him and find out. out. Yellow. Hey, Tailgate, what's going on, man? It's Brandon. Hey, Brandon, not much. How you been? Hey, yeah, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Just been working a lot. Oh, that's good. Um, no, you know, it's just th working on my last show, and this is actually going to be my last show. So I was thinking, you know, hey, that'd be kind of cool to, you know, have you come on, and you know, since you got me hired here, and you can do like a special appearance or something. Oh, really? You know, it's funny you mention that. I'm actually going to come replace you. Oh, real? Really? You you're going to take over for me? Nope. What the? F Well, hey everyone, the time has finally come to get back racing for the King of the West Sprint Car Series. After about a month off from racing, we're very excited to get back at it this Saturday at the Placerville Speedway. It is going to be an action-packed night at the Mooring in Placerville. It's always, always exciting. Fans are on their, the fans are on their, the fans are standing They're always They don't use the seats. <laughs> I, I, I just get it's, it's, I'm already excited I'm not there yet. This Saturday night is going to be round number nine of the scheduled 23 events, and uh, I know the teams are really excited to get back at it. You know, about half of the teams haven't raced over the last month, so they're, everything's going to be fresh and everything, but uh, we have some special guests coming. The teams need to have a little break after eight races and get their their, their items all freshened up, the engines, and, and get, get a little break, get, do some things with the family now they get back, because we've got a long stretch coming. Seven weekends in a row. Mm -hmm. Now, we also want to talk about the Dirt Cup that was held last weekend at the Skagit Speedway. Our very own Jonathan Allard, three-time defending King of the West champion, picked up his fourth career Dirt Cup win, so a very historical moment up there. Right. We'll get into that later. Yeah, last weekend uh, I had the privilege of going up to RTS Speedway in uh, Burnley, Nevada, and, and Whitney sees a little history there. We saw yeah. Buddy Kofoid, uh 11 years old, hard to believe, 11 years old, winning the first ever wing sprint car race, becoming the youngest ever driver to win a wing sprint car race, uh, and, and a phenomenal drive by the end. Yeah, the kid's just the real deal. I mean, the amount of throttle control that he possesses is absolutely remarkable, right. and uh, the smarts. I mean, he's been racing go-karts for almost his whole life and winning championships and everything, so... You know, we very... heard about him in the go-kart. Yeah, we did, we did. How, how great he was, and, 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 you know, the number of wins he had in, in, the, in, the, in the big outlaw karts. And, and now he's, he's, he's running with the big boys, and yep. uh, he, he looked really good. I was very, very impressed with Buddy up there. Well, we keep talking about him. We have a nice little highlight package here that was put together by Greg Stevens, our helicopter buddy up there at yep. Fernley. And then we also had an interview that we did with Buddy uh, before his first ever Spring Curry's back in April at the Reno Tahoe Fernley Speedway. Let's check it out.
Wilson, double zero V I M C A. Proud resident of Lovelock, Nevada. A great night, the track was right. I uh, got the, made some changes I never made before to the car. Figured I'd throw something at it. I'm not running here for points. And the track came to me and the car was fast. And I was able to drive it for a change and it all worked out. and I'm 11 years old and just got to thank everybody for coming out and Dan for putting on a good race and giving me the opportunity to drive this car. That's a world record youngest ever sprint car first place finish. Hello everyone, this is King of the West tonight on the road at the Reno Tahoe Fernley Speedway opener on April 13th and we're talking with young 11 year old Michael Buddy Kofoid and Buddy tonight you're going to be making your debut in a sprint car so I'm sure you're going to be excited. Yeah, a lot. Now you were out here last week at RTS Speedway out there uh, during the practice day and they said you were driving circles around these guys so how much fun did you have last week? I hope to have the same fun as today and I had a lot of fun last week. How does this track compare to the others you've been on? I know you've been to Marysville, uh, and then you were out at Rio Vista at our test track. Uh, is it, it seems like it's a little larger than the other two. Yeah, they are. And I like this track a lot better than all the other ones I've been to. It looks like it's going to be a good racy joint. I know they've done a lot of work over the winter. And uh, I mean, what are the speeds like getting in the corners here? Because the straightaways are they're pretty long. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't put it all the way down yet, but hopefully I can tonight. Well, tonight's the night. Of course, you're driving for Dan Simpson, DES Incorporated. I'm sure you were excited when you got the phone call. You and your dad, I know, came out to, to drive uh, Dan's backup car. Yeah, I was super excited. Now, share with everyone about there about your Outlaw go-kart career, because you've been out racing, I think, since you were about four or five, your dad said last time? Yeah. Yeah. How many championships have you won? It seems, I mean, you, I think you have, what, 11? Like, you won a championship almost every year, it seems like. Well, I have nine right now in the go-karts. So nine championships tonight, your sprint car debut. Uh, what are some of the tracks you race at in the Outlaw Car? You go over to Cycleland and places like that? Yeah, Cycleland, um, Red Bluff, Lakeport, Ukiah, Oregon, um, places like that. We might go out of state a little bit in the summer, at the end of the summer. Where do you see your career going to in you know four or five years? Or where, where do you want to get? Is NASCAR kind of your, your ultimate goal? I want to be like Kyle Larson. Want to be like Kyle Larson, that's pretty good. Yeah. Who's one of your heroes in sprint car racing? I know people might have seen video of your car that uh, you've been practicing out at Marysville. Uh, some guy named Steve Kinzer, I think? Yep. <laughs> you ever want to be an outlaw driver maybe? They like the king? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> well, tonight, your debut in a sprint car once again. We love having you up here, and we're really excited, and best of luck. Hopefully, we'll be talking to you after the race. Thank you. All right, everyone, that's 11-year-old Michael Buddy Kofoy tonight making a sprint car debut at the Reno Tahoe Fernley Speedway. You know, Gary, I think uh, Buddy enjoyed the after-race ceremonies as much as he did the race. Those, <laughs> those ladies kind of had him um, smiling. A little bit, I'd say. <laughs> but no, it's been a lot of fun having Buddy driving for Dan Simpson. Uh, just a pleasure to get to see him kind of yeah. grow. His third sprint race picking up a win, very impressive. And he'll be back in the seat over 4th of July weekend, July 5th and 6th, the Cherry Bomb Classic. Two nights of racing for the KWS Lights, a doubleheader alongside the KWS 410. Opportunity for the youngster to become the youngest ever points leader in a sprint car series. Yep. We talked about that. He's just one point out of the point leader right now is the silent ghost Jeff Macedo leads with 454. Buddy Kofoy, who says second place, just one back, 453. How about the ageless one? Robert Cooney. Robert Cooney, veteran. 445. Driver. He's only nine back. Nine back. And then Dan Simpson, one behind Cooney, the veteran Dan Simpson <laughs> with 444. Bob Cooney, he's back there with 308. Bob missed this uh, racing exit this past weekend, but I, I, I tell you, I'm looking, looking, for, uh, looking for some. Exciting action, a big show July 5th yeah. and 6th at, at Fernley. Four classes, mm -hmm. you're going to get the KWS 410s back in action both nights. The lights, we've got a, a dwarf car invitation, we're expecting 35, 40 dwarf cars. And then a, they're putting up some extra money yep. in the modified main event. 
So the IMC Modified Main Event, paying some big money. We expect a big car out there. You want to see a full night of racing action. You get your fun. money's worth, I'd have to yeah, say. Absolutely. <laughs> July 5th and 6th, uh, stay at the Nugget. Uh, the code is on your screen. You get a special room rate if you call the Nugget. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. We're all excited for it. Let's check out a little 30 second promo that our good producer, Brandon Skadge, put together as well for the Cherry Bomb Classic at the Friendly Speedway. The series that breeds the stars such as Kyle Larson, Tim Kading, Brent Kading, Kyle Hurst, and Jonathan Allard. Come and see wheel to wheel action in these outlaw style sprint cars. King of the West Series, July 5 and 6 at the RTF Speedway in Fernley, Nevada. Two days on the fastest 3 8 mile in the West. All spectators also eligible to win a day in a sprint car. For more info, call 325 8800 or 224 7644 or at rtfspeedway.com. Hey, I want to thank Brandon for putting that, uh, that great piece together. Gary, uh, we talked a little bit. You were up at the Skagit, Washington at the annual Dirt Cup up there, which I missed this year because I was at Fermi working. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit about the weekend. Uh, started out a little, little moist. Yeah, a little wet on Thursday. Uh, they said it started raining about 10 p.m. the night before, and it, it didn't stop all day Thursday, so we were greeted with some rain. But once that rain got out of there, it was a pretty, pretty good weekend overall. And I heard it was pretty good race. Pretty good racing. Shane Stewart, of course, started in the front row. and He's raced with us. What's going to happen if you put Shane Stewart in the front row most of the time? He's going to win. He's going to win. Especially that, in Paul Silva's It's car. Paul Silva's car. That's exactly what he did. He won opening night. But uh, because of the rain out Thursday, we had a double show on Saturday. I, I, well, wait a minute. I heard Saturday morning you started off with a real special uh, uh, program. Bright and early. I woke up at 7 a.m. Saturday. We had, had the uh, Jeff Gordon Children's Foundation Kick It for Cancer game. Uh, organized by our buddy Budwell Al. You know, we know uh, yeah. Al up there in Washington. Uh, want to thank him for doing all the work to put that together. Raised, I think, like something like $4,500 for, uh, for the Jeff Gordon Foundation as well as the Big Al uh, Motorsports Foundation. So that was a lot of fun. I got to kind of announce the event with Caleb and Kelly Hart, so that was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, then we had the then auction. Then Thursday night show on Friday. Yeah, then they, exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> However you want to say it. But, uh, yeah, it turned out to be a great, a great racing. Uh, the track. Typical day track started off not so good, but uh, they decided to rework the track during the B main. Had a couple of false starts, but uh, it paid off because that main event was one of the best I've seen at Skagit. You had Peter Murphy, Austin Wheatley, and Shane Stewart duking it out. Uh, a great three car battle for the win as the laps went down. Well, and, and tell them who won. Peter Murphy. Oh, that's, that's right. right. Very popular win. I think he's raced with us too, guys. Yes, he's another guy we've seen a lot, but uh, Austin Wheatley did a great job. Looked like he was going to win the main event for it. He hasn't raced in about a month, really? I don't think. Yeah. So, uh, he did a great job, but Peter Murphy was able to get around him, and we talked with Peter later in the show about uh, about the pass and what he saw as he started stalking Austin there as the lap's gone down. And that, you know, that, that's a great motivation for, for Peter Murphy because he's had some tough luck at a couple of our races, yep. and, and I think that might just turn his whole season around. Yep, uh, definitely. Hope it does, but uh, you fast forward to Saturday night, and of course we said Jonathan Allard picked up a win, very historical win, becoming just a second driver other than right. Jimmy Sills to win the Dirt Cup on four or more occasions. I mean, he passed names like uh, Tim Green, Brent Kane, and Jimmy Boyd, who won three, and now Allard has surpassed those. So that's pretty historical. Yeah, $20,000 to win, and when, when the money's up and you take uh, the Williams Motorsports team to Skagit, he's the odds-on favorite. They're I don't dynamite. care who's there. That's right, they've been dynamite the last 10 years. And we want to congratulate Maury and Katie Williams, Ashley Smith, yes. that whole team has been huge supporters of 410 racing on the West Coast, and uh, definitely happy for their success. I tell you, Allard, Allard and Murphy had a good run, but uh, third place? Another another gentleman who runs with us pretty well, uh, Rico Weber. Yeah, Rico Weber did a great job in third place, but uh, you talk about Peter Murphy winning that prelim. You know, Peter did a great job there, came back to second, and we also got the chance to speak with him about that great event. Let's take a listen to what Peter Murphy had to say about his uh, Dirt Cup experience. Well, Peter, what is it with you in the Skagit Speedway, man? It's, every time you run at that place, it just seems to be like magic. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think since the first time I've been there, I've liked it, and... Um, I don't know, it's just, uh, I, don't, I honestly got, I think it's a different frame of mind when you get there, you know, it can be a very daunting place, it's a bit like Tulare, you know, you know, you either like it or you don't, and I actually, um, I really like it, I used to like it a lot better than, than now, actually, when we first went there, you know, I used to be banked a lot more, and right. you could run right up against the fence, but, um, but uh, yeah, it's still a great place. Now, during the second prelim on Saturday morning, or uh, Saturday afternoon, I guess it was, you picked up your first one of the year after a thrilling duel with Austin Wheatley and Shane Stewart. What was going through your mind those last handful of laps when you were tracking down Wheatley? Because it seemed like you were reeling him in, reeling him in, and, and finally made your move. 
Yeah, just um, looking for different places to run on the track. You know, daytime race tracks are, um, you know, uh, obviously slick, um, and that's just the nature of the beast of a daytime. But, um, um, you know, just looking where he was running, uh, and I think I set it up there. I think if he stayed on his line, um, you know, it might have been a different outcome. But, um, you know, he did move down, and he didn't move all the way down. That was his problem, I think. But, yeah, just looking for, for traction, really, and... Um, but then, uh, you know, I think on the last lap, we, we um, dropped a, the motor, you know, took a, um, a turn for the worst, and I was actually just trying to make it to the finish line there, but luckily enough, we only had one lap to go, so right. it's all good. Now, after such a great run of the Dirt Cup, I'm sure it has to give you a lot of confidence heading into Placerville. We get the King of the West Series season back underway. You're currently eighth in points, but you're right behind Brent Cading, and it seems like each week you're, you're picking a momentum, so uh, I'm sure you're looking for that W this weekend in Placerville. Yeah, I, you know, just uh, honestly, uh, just a good weekend at Placerville would be good because I haven't had too many of them there. Um, you know, it takes about this long, half a year before we, you know, uh, got work under control and then, you know, the racing sort of gets a bit more and, and then we get more, I don't know, just better for whatever reason, right. you know. So um, hopefully this weekend will be good and, and we continue on there and um, keep on moving forward. That It would be good. <laughs> it would be good just to finish on, you know, in the top five there. Well, I would be ecstatic. So um, we'll see what happens. You know, Gary, behind Peter Murphy and, and Jonathan Allard, our points leader, finished third on Saturday night, Rico Abreu. Uh, you told me he had a, a great run as well. You know, the one of those consistent nights for Rico that we've seen all season long. Uh, we talked about him pairing left with Paul Silva. It's just been a magical combination this year. And he had a great battle there with Peter Murphy, as we talked about with Peter. And uh, you're going to be losing Rico here, but it's uh, been a lot of fun having him out here. Watching his progress this year has been one of the highlights that I know for myself personally. I think we talked before we, we, we came on camera. The last 16 months, the improvement by Rico Abreu, his patience and his car control and throttle control. I mean, two years ago, you would have thought, oh, I don't know if he's going to finish the yeah, race. Yeah. <laughs> now, he methodically works at somebody in mean, lap traffic, gets through him, doesn't just dive right mm -hmm. in there, and he's become a, a real threat anytime he gets a race. For sure, and, and he didn't just stop there at Dirt Cup. He took an early flight out of Skagit. Yeah. Sunday night, picked up his first ever USAC National Midget win at uh, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Yeah. A very special night for Rico, and we had the chance to wow. catch up with him and talk to him about that special Dirt Cup third place finish and then his first ever USAC National Midget win. Let's check it out. Well, last weekend you competed at the Dirt Cup for the second time in your career, Rico, and scored a third place finish behind Jonathan Allard, a four-time Dirt Cup winner, and uh, the, the morning program's winner, Peter Murphy. Now, you and Peter diced it up pretty good there, so that had to be a fun main event. Yeah, uh, you know, the main, you know, it played out a little different than, you know, normal mains do. Uh, we ran uh, Saturday, we ended up running two shows in one day, uh, you know, so I was wore out. I never really got a chance to get a nap in or nothing, and um, the Saturday night feature, I, uh, you know, started fifth, fifth and uh, was running, you know, got in a second, got by Peter Murphy there for second, and uh, got over the cushion there with a couple laps to go, and ended up running third, but I actually, uh, you know, really enjoyed going up there to Washington, uh, you know, we got to race a lot, and then, uh, you know, congratulations to Jonathan Allard and Peter Murphy for, you know, their up front wins, or runs. Now, after Dirt Cup, you then flew out early that morning to Wisconsin and uh, won your first USAC National Midget feature at Sun Prairie. Now, I know that's been a long time coming. I mean, you were close a couple weeks ago during the uh, Midget Week, so what was it like to finally get that USAC National Midget win under your belt? Uh, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool the way it happened. Uh, you know, I've uh, had, a, and I had a lot of speed throughout Midget Week, you know, and should have won at least two of the nights, I felt, and uh, of Indiana Midget Week, and... You know, Sunday I uh, you know, started up front, and uh, it rained all day the day before there, so the track was, you know, a little wet, and, uh, you know, had a lot of moisture in it, and there was a big cushion, and, you know, I struggled there running the cushion, and it was big, and I, uh, you know, there was a few to go, I just got up above the cushion and got around Tracy Hines, and, uh, you know, just never looked back. Now, you're currently leading the King of the West points, uh, but we won't see you again until later in the year. What's on tap for you this weekend and the rest of the summer? I know you're going kind to of be bouncing back between sprints and midgets. Yeah, this weekend I'm uh, actually going to Knoxville for my uh, first debut in a 410 oh, cool. car there. And then uh, Houston's on Sunday for, uh, I believe it's an all-star. Maybe it's just a local show. And then... Uh, on Wednesday, I was going to go back to Houston, but now I'm going to run the Hot 100 with Keith Kins at uh, Granite City, Illinois. Granite City, Illinois. 
Well, hey, you know, no, we I, hate, I, yeah, we hate losing you, but uh, it's going to be a big summer for you, I know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, i got a lot of races, a lot of good races coming up. Uh, you know, and I'll be back to run the King of the Life here shortly at the end of the year. You know, Gary, uh, we, we want to wish Rico the best of luck. We hate to see him leave. He's our yeah, points leader. Right, right. He's leaving for uh, the greener pastures, I mm -hmm. guess, of the Midwest and, and East Coast and some sprint car midget racing. And, you know, kind of feel like he's on the Kyle Larson track. Yeah, definitely. He's definitely uh, on the fast track. And we want to wish him the best of luck at Knoxville this week in his first ever attempt there. I know he's pumped for that. Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's, he likes his big, he likes Calistoga. He, he likes he the does. big fast racetracks. Mm -hmm. And I guess to end our Dirt Cup recap, uh, round of the top five was Travis Rylett from Texas, another big name driver. And then Kyle Hurst, who rebounded after some tough luck on opening night to, to round out the top five to cap his weekend successfully uh, for Dennis and Teresa Roth. And it's glad to see that he uh, he got the, the you know the Roth team, got everything rolling mm -hmm. and got him back up for a top five on Saturday night. Yeah, definitely. And speaking of Kyle Hurst, we're going to have a little shake-up in the points as we go into Placerville this Saturday night. We talked about Rico Avery heading back to the Midwest to compete oh, yeah. the rest of the summer, but Kyle Hurst is going to inherit the point lead as he looks for his first ever title. Well, are you sure of that? Absolutely. Willie Croft looks pretty Willie strong. Croft right there, too. That's true. Yeah, he's third in going into uh, Saturday night's action at Placerville. And Jonathan Allard 30, 30 39 back, four. so yeah, they're, it's three cars going to come out with a point lead. Yeah, that, they don't want right. Can't count the chickens too fast, yeah. I guess. And, and Craig Stidham is not that far back. He, you know, he's... Uh, he can... He can turns things around and he could be right up there in that point so with a matter of a good finish and a couple of bad, you know, bad sort of events. Prior to our break, Craig Stidham has started field some That's momentum, exactly right. so I had to look for him to keep that up and he won a Rebel Cup race when we were uh, on hiatus there for about a month, so looking forward to Craig that night as well. But right. uh, you look down the points list, I mean, you got Jason Statler right there in sixth and he's a former Placerville winner. He's looking for his first win of the season. Yeah, former King of California, Brent Cady in the seventh and then Peter Murphy, who's making some insurance yep. now. And, and with his confidence after Dirt Cup, he's eighth and I'm sure he's going to move up ninth. Richard Brace Jr., uh, you know, he's uh, right. he's looked pretty good this and year. And he's got laps at Placerville, too, so he's another yeah. one. Corey Elias, right there, making it yeah. in the top ten. Corey set fast time at Placerville and won his heat earlier in the year, so I know he's excited to get back there as well. Yeah, plus all the other drivers that, that, that'll be there, you know, Doug Gandy, Carl Dravold, Chad Compton, Pat Harvey. I know you got a little special thing right. we're going to do for one of Pat's uh, friends, Jeffrey Stroll, Evan Sun. I, you know, great star-studded lineup. It's a good man. That's like 16 full-time drivers, and that, that's pretty, pretty successful so far this and year. And now, on Saturday night, we're going to team them up with Mr. Excitement in town. That's Andy right, Forsberg. Andy Forsberg, looking for his first Andy Gray? Andy Gray's got four wins this season. Yeah. A guy like Tommy Tarleton, who's from down the Central Macedo. Valley. Arson Macedo. See, that's going to be a, a really a really stout field. We're really excited. It's going to be probably one of the better 410 fields we've had at Placerville in, I'm going to say, the last 10 years. I, I, I think you're right, absolutely. And Bobby McMahon returning to another oh, guy. There you you know, go. We, yeah, you heard about that. We, Bobby's coming back. Miss Bobby's had some back problems uh, since the start of the year. We, we've seen him one time this year, and uh, he'll be back in action, so looking forward to that as well. And I'm sure there'll be a few more surprises, but Saturday night, got to get there. Yep. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing, George. The stands at Placerville always pack in, and we sold out last time, so you got to get there early. Tickets go on sale right around 2 o'clock inside the grandstand in the, in the concession stand. Yeah, right. Come out, tailgate. Uh, they got a great grass area for tailgate and the barbecue, right. uh, drink some cold ones, and make a day out of it. Right. And then then don't forget, when you buy your tickets, go mark your, your right. chalk, 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 your chalk line. Yeah, make some chalk. <laughs> mark your line. Mark your name out there. So you come back and right when the gate's open, get in that chalk line, get your best seat, and, and get it set for, mm -hmm. for a great night of action at the... Uh, you know, Alan and Diane Handy's uh, yeah. Placerville Speedway. We always love going to Placerville, the hospitality of Alan and Diane Handy. Uh, Bill Sullivan up in the booth and everyone yep. shows is just great. And uh, the fans there, as we said, are just awesome and uh, we're really excited for Saturday. Action packed in the high banks of Placerville. What else are you saying? Don't get better it's, than that. I think uh, Tim Kading calls it the Eldora on the Yeah, right. Exactly. It, it, it's, it's just <laughs> amazing. Uh, you know, that's, that kicks off our seven weeks in a row. Yeah. And we've got a lot of racing the next six weeks. Uh, that we talked about the Cherry Bomb Classic, July 5th and 6th, the Reno Tahoe Ferning Speedway, uh, 410s, KWS Lights, uh, the Dwarf Car uh, Invitational, the IMC Modifieds. Uh, it should be an action-packed weekend at Reno Tahoe yeah. Ferning Speedway. Definitely excited to get back up to Fernley. And if you want to buy tickets, pre-order your tickets, uh, the number is 775-325-8800. But there's also ticket and room packages, George, I believe, with the John Scruggs Nuggets. Nugget. That's correct. Pretty yeah. cool little package. That number is 775 775- 573-3350. So if you want a room at Nugget, you want a ticket, call up that number. Yeah, and then uh, we go from Reno Tahoe Fernley and, and we go from Nevada to the ocean. That's right, down to the ocean. Ocean Speedway. <laughs> Looking forward to that. July 13th, the Howard Cating Classic, third annual edition already at the Howard Cating Classic. And uh, 
I know I used to work there, you used to work there, so it, it's a fun place to go. And uh, I mean, the racing at Watsonville the last handful of years has been second to none. A tribute to a legend, and no doubt about it. Yeah, the autograph session will be, you know, Howard, mm -hmm. Brent, and Bud King. Yeah, I believe Bud, yep. Uh, that, that is, of course, Tim's back for running the Outlaws, mm -hmm. otherwise he'd probably be right, there. Right, right. And if there's not an Outlaw show, he might be there too. Never know. Who knows? But, uh, and that is July 13th, right. Ocean Speedway, uh, Ocean Speedway, Watsonville. Watsonville. And don't forget the night before that, they have USAC Sprints yeah. and Midgets there. So it's really, it's a doubleheader weekend. Come on out, camp. I mean, it, it, it was a lot of fun last year, yep. uh, seeing the traditional sprints, I guess you want to call them. Well, I know the you'll be there both nights. I'll be there both nights. I'm looking forward to that. But uh, yeah, definitely excited. Our Kading Classic, 410s, non-wing, midgets, everything you want. Seven days later, July 20th, we're at our final appearance of the year at uh, John Sorry's Antioch Speedway. Looking forward to that. Antioch Speedway always provides a lot of excitement and uh, uh, always love going to John Sorry's Speedway. It's kind of our home track. We're, of course, located down here in Rio Vista. That's about 17 miles up the road. So uh, always a lot of fun going there and, uh, yeah, our second and final appearance. And where do we go the next week? The next week? Ocean again, I think. The ocean again, down in Santa Maria. A little further south. Yeah, if you want to go to the heat, July 27th, mark it on your calendar, Santa Maria. First time we've been down there in two years. That track is just, it's a unique experience there. It's built kind of on the side of a hill, you know, and uh, there's not many places like Santa Maria. It's a very historic facility. Uh, it's really, you're coming from the north, you drive by it on Highway 101, you look to the right, you see that, that checkerboard grandstand, the yeah, black and yeah. white checkerboard, take the next turn off and you're at the racetrack there in Santa Maria. That's a great track. I think it was built by uh, the legend Doug Fort. Him yeah. and him and Nettie uh, just moved oh, that yeah. place into one of the premier dirt tracks anywhere in the country. I mean, that place, if you haven't been to Santa Maria, check it out. Then we kick off another, uh, a little more history in the making, mm -hmm. August 3rd, Stockton. Right. First time we're gonna go there, and we also announced recently we'll be there twice. That's right, November 2nd. Back in November, yep. November 2nd. So we've added a, a race to the schedule, if you haven't heard. But we're going to be there August 3rd, the Stockton 99 Dirt Track at the San Joaquin County Fairgrounds in Stockton. Uh, your chance to see the KWS 410 Sprints at uh, uh, California's newest dirt track. You talked about unique tracks, that's another one built inside of a horse track. The grandstands there are the nicest oh. grandstands, bar none, you're going to have at a sprint car race in oh. California. I mean, it, it's... it's it, yeah, we went to the Outlaw Race. Yeah, that was a lot. That was fun. That it? was fun. <laughs> that really was. It's going to be a great night of racing action. August 3rd. And that's a Stockton 99 dirt track, not the asphalt not track, the, asphalt the dirt track. track of the San Joaquin County Fairgrounds. In this big uh, month, I guess month and a half long of racing, whatever right. you want to call it, uh, it all comes to an end August 9th and 10th, held during the hot August night celebration in Reno. We'll be at the RTF Speedway in Fernley for two nights of racing. Uh, first time ever during hot August nights where we get to have, you get to be part of all the action at hot August nights. I mean, it is going to be great. It's not just a car show. They got drag races or burnout competitions or, <laughs> or, or bands, and they've got cruises. They've got, uh, they got a beauty contest. Uh, they got, I, I think there's so much going on in town, and uh, we're going to be a part of that on, on for two big days, Friday and Saturday, yep. August 9th and 10th. And then this year, they've also added the Barrett Jackson auction during the day. So if you've seen it on TV, this is a great opportunity to see Barrett Jackson during the day and KWS at night. Well, before we end tonight's show, uh, we wanted to make a comment about the start of the show. If you saw yeah, that, you probably it, yeah. wondering what the heck was that. Uh, oh. <laughs> well, tonight is our uh, video producer, Brandon Skaggs, uh, final show with us as he moves on to uh, more endeavors in his life. Taking a new job, I believe, at uh, one of the stores down in Pleasanton. Well, you know, Brandon wasn't just the, the camera guy. He wasn't just the editor. He was a producer. He was a director. He did <laughs> all of that. He went to the races, shot the highlights. I mean, he was a one-man production Jack of all trades. That's for he sure. He really was. And, and he's been great to work with. We need to get Brandon on this side of the camera so everybody can see. Come on over, Brandon. Yeah, this you is uh, the man behind the camera. Yeah, this so is yeah, the last. We, they get to, we can put him on camera for the last That's night. That's right. right. The last <laughs> night. Brandon, I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure watching your, your growth and not being a sprint car fan when you started with us. And uh, it's, it's, been, it's been great working with you. I've learned a lot. Yeah, thank you. I, same here been a lot of fun. I know uh, we talked about bringing new fans into the sport. Uh, it's been fun for me to see kind of your get into it more and more as the season's gone on. Uh, you know, you never know how a new fan is going to react or you bring somebody in the sport. And uh, it's been cool to see you start to follow certain drivers and start to see their personalities and gain your favorites and everything. And uh, it, it's been a cool experience for us as well. You come up with a, a favorite driver in the last couple of years, haven't you? Yeah, Willie Croft. Yeah. Willie Croft. Yeah. Willie's got, He's got one fan. Got one okay. fan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, Willie. Sorry, no, Willie. No, no, we're just kidding. I, I know you got two. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, you know, uh, some of your comments about this crazy sprint car world that you, you never never even knew it existed until you came came to KWS. Tell us a little bit about what you learned. No, I mean, you know, like you said, I, you know, never even knew what a sprint car was. And <laughs> I, I think that that's, that's the reason why, you know, that it's grown so much since I've been here is because I, I sort of taken that view of, 
you know, somebody who's never been to a race. And I, I try to incorporate that into every show so that, you know, the, a, a new, it can kind of bring in new fans, you know, because that was the ultimate goal is to try and bring in new fans each week, so. Well, I think, I think that's what you brought to the show as well. You brought that, that new, fresh approach from somebody who's not been in sprint car racing. And you ask questions that we take for granted, and I know yeah, Gary, right, Gary's right. actually using his announcing right, now right. to cover that during during the race night. And I have too when I talk to people. You know, this the questions you ask are now the, the answers I get. Yeah, you know, that's 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 pretty it's pretty great to have you. I'm going to hate to lose you because you've been a great asset to everything we've done here. I mean, from commercials to shooting the races and and to doing the show, and and uh, you've improved our sound. You've improved our our cameras and, and I mean it's it's just been great having you here and it's going to be a great loss mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to find somebody to replace you definitely been a lot of fun having you here thank bud. you likewise like I say it's been more more than just a job you've been a friend to, to both of us and we've had some uh, we've had some fun times last year I'd say yeah. hey don't forget to check out all the latest information about KWS Sprints on kwsprints.com hey, Gary being the last show for Brandon maybe he should sign us off I think he should I just want to say thank you to everyone and um, thank you for everyone who's had these kind words and um, I just hope to uh, you know see everybody on the spectator side of the races this time. So all right, good, good night everybody and thank you again.